In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to today's Mass. Today is May 1st, Friday, and the first Friday of the month of May. We are celebrating the Easter season and the resurrection of the Lord. We celebrate the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We honor the Sacred Heart today on this first Friday of the month. And also in the church, we honor St. Joseph, the husband of Mary, but under the title of St. Joseph the Worker. Because in many countries of the world today, May 1st is, is Labor Day. A lot of countries in Europe celebrate this day or observe it as, as Labor Day. We in our country observe Labor Day, of course, on the first Monday of September. But in many parts of the world today is observed as Labor Day. And under the patronage of St. Joseph, who we know was a carpenter, a tradesman, who was a worker, and who, we are sure, taught Jesus his trade as well, because we recognize Jesus also as the carpenter from, from Nazareth. And so we bring all this together on this first day of May, also this day, this month of May, being in honor of the Blessed Mother. The entire month of May is dedicated to the honor of Mary, our dear and blessed Mother. So a lot of things come together on this day today. But we come here today through the means of the various devices that you are using, the Internet, to bring you the sacrifice of the Mass. We want to be in union with Jesus, knowing that where we are gathered together in his name, he truly is present, and we hear him as we read the scriptures, that those scriptures are proclaimed to us, which is the word of God, and also the Eucharist, which although I know you cannot receive physically, sacramentally, you can indeed spiritually join with Jesus, who desires to be in your heart, who desires to be with you, with all of us. So let us now prepare to celebrate this Mass today as we, first of all, acknowledge our sins before God, our unworthiness before him, and let us ask him humbly to forgive us. I confess yes, to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage that we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. 
For three days he was, he was unable to see, and he neither ate or drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your body, to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go, Go out, out to, to all, all the world, world and tell, tell the, the good, good news. news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go, Go out, out to, to all, all the world, world and tell the, the good, good news. news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go, Go out, out to all, all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh, drinks my blood, remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen. Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things Jesus said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are a lot of things today that we are, are observing and celebrating those that I mentioned at the beginning of Mass. And the scriptures today are filled with uh, so much. They are, our first reading, for instance, from the Acts of the Apostles, talks about the conversion of St. Paul. 
He was a great enemy of Christianity. And anybody who proclaimed Christ, he hated them, really hated them. And, in fact, he was going down to Damascus, as the Acts of the Apostles tells us, to go and throw into prison and bring to trial those who proclaimed Jesus as the Messiah. But as he was going to Damascus, Paul had this, whose name was Saul still, had this great incident happen, a conversion that took place in his life where he was thrown from his horse and he was blinded by the light. And he heard a voice that spoke to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And when he asked, well, who, who are you? And the voice came to him, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Paul was instantly converted at that time. And he went to Damascus. And he reflected on all that happened, even though he was blinded for a short time. And Ananias came to him, called by God to tell him that he had been chosen by God himself to proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. A little bit ironic. And we see how God uses very unlikely candidates, unlikely people, to do his work. But God in his infinite wisdom knows that when he chooses people that we see unfit or people that we we wouldn't choose that it couldn't possibly be their work but that it is God who works through them and even Ananias was afraid to to approach Paul because he was such an enemy of Christians that he was said Lord this man was persecuting us the Lord told him, I have chosen, chosen this man to bring the message of the gospel to the Gentiles and all those beyond Israel. And Paul indeed became the great apostle who indeed brought the message of the gospel to many lands. And in fact, much of the, the New Testament of the Bible is, is made up of the letters that he wrote to the various communities, the Christian communities that he founded. There are actual letters that upheld their faith to help to keep them strong. And it is thanks to St. Paul that we know much about the early developments of the church. And then in the Gospel, we see Jesus again speaking about the Eucharist and how the, the people were upset and confused. How can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? <laughs> this is a difficult talk. We can't take this. What's wrong with this man? But we know that it was at the Last Supper that Jesus fulfilled that promise to give the world, through his disciples, his body and blood in the Eucharist, through the bread and wine offered at the Passover, which Jesus transformed into what we call today the Mass, what we are celebrating today. Jesus transforms, transfigures, transubstantiates the bread and wine into his body and blood, makes himself truly present for us so that we may receive him into ourselves, that he may become actually a part of us and we a part of him as we take him into ourselves. What an extraordinary and profound gift that Jesus has given to us. We need Jesus. We need our risen Lord in our lives because we need our faith to constantly be fed, to constantly be supported, because without that, our faith would shrivel up and die. Just as our physical bodies need food, so also our spiritual self needs that food. And Jesus gives that to us the spiritual bread, the bread from heaven, his body and blood, so that we may continue to be his followers throughout our lives. It's not easy to be a Christian follower. It's not easy to uphold the gospel. It never was. There was never a time in, in history it, where it was easy to be a Christian. Not so easy today as well. And that's why we need Jesus. We need him to be with us. We need one another to 
help us uphold our faith and to live it and to proclaim it and to share it with each other. We pray that that day will come soon when we will be able to return to our churches, that we can come together in community, as community of faith, to share our faith with each other and to be nourished by the bread from heaven, the bread of life, which is Jesus himself, who comes to us in the Eucharist, in our holy communion with him. We pray that God will help us to reach that day soon. May God bless all of you as you struggle through this time, but know that even though you cannot receive Jesus physically and sacramentally in holy communion with him, you indeed can receive him spiritually because Jesus wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be with you as he does with all of us, and he wants us to be with him. Let us be grateful that God so so loved the world that he gave us his only son, that even though he suffered and died because he loved us so much, even though we rejected him, he rose and he is alive and he is with us now and always will be till the end of time, as he said. Please join with me now in the prayers that we offer today for our various intentions. Just as we know the voice of the Good Shepherd, we trust that God knows our voices and responds our, to our prayers as we gather together our needs and the needs of the world. That all of us may be nourished and transformed by Christ in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the word of God may put an end to violence in the name of religion between nations and peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That persecuted Christians throughout the world may be protected by God within their homes and churches, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are affected by COVID-19, that they may find relief and comfort through the assistance of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, may they feast forever with Christ at his heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Natalie Vega and for our own private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Father of mercy and love, Hear and answer these and all our prayers that we offer this day in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the commemoration of St. Joseph, 
to give you fitting praise and glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, Father, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Natalie and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. 
And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the f- signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of today's celebration. On this very special day, this first day of May, this first Friday of the month, in honor of the Sacred Heart, this feast day of St. Joseph the Worker, and this first day in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So thank you for, for, for all this that is happening today, for being with us and beginning this, uh, this great month of May. We invite you to be with us this coming Sunday, which will be the fourth Sunday of Easter, and also Good Shepherd Sunday, in which Jesus reminds us that he truly is the Good Shepherd And we are the sheep of the flock that he came to to lead and to save. I greet everyone who is is watching us today, those of who are from our parish of Our Lady of Las Vegas, and also those from my family in in Michigan and friends in in Illinois and uh, Ohio, New Jersey, uh, North Dakota, and uh, various places. Thank you so very much for being with us, and I hope that you are spiritually uplifted Uh, as you join us in this prayer, and that we come together with Christ in this Eucharist. We pray on your behalf that you are continuing to be strong during this uh, time of isolation and social distancing. I know that's difficult because, like I said, we are designed to be together in community. We pray for that day when we can indeed come together. We hopefully that will be soon. Not yet, but uh, hopefully it will be soon. And so I invite you now through the intercession of our dear and blessed Mother Mary under the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that she will intercede for us as we continue to journey through this difficult time and that we may be strong and be even stronger on the other side of this pandemic. So please join us now in prayer. O Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, O loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world 
and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the Church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that truly are our compassionate Mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection, keep us in the embrace of your arms, and help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. And so now, as we prepare to say goodbye, we ask the Lord now to grant us his blessing, that he may continue to be with us always, to uplift us with his grace and with his blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.